Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Let's go ahead and open there, please, this morning. If you've not yet done so, Ecclesiastes chapter number 3. And we have been uh, taking it as our, our theme for 2022, the time is at hand. Uh, hundreds of times you find the word time uh, in your Bible. And uh, well, obviously we will not look at all of those this year. But what we hope to do and what we'd like to do is the Lord will allow us is to take the times, uh, the word, that word, and look at it throughout the scriptures and draw out some thoughts that I hope will be a help and a blessing to us. And uh, obviously we're in two series of messages on Sundays right now. In the morning we're preaching through uh, Hebrews chapter 11 and Sunday night we're preaching through the book of the Revelation of Jesus Christ. And uh, we'll uh, be getting back to those uh, in the next week or two. I didn't realize next week is uh, Mother's Day, so we may bring some uh, appropriate messages uh, along those lines. But Ecclesiastes chapter 3 uh, is one that uh, this would be a more familiar uh, uh, mention of the word time. You've uh, read these verses uh, probably in the past. You've heard uh, reference to these verses in the past. And so let's look at them this morning, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, and we're going to begin in verse number 1. And mark the words, uh, the word time, that's mentioned many uh, different times here. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, at verse number 1. The word of God says, to everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born, and a time to die. A time to plant, and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill, and a time to heal. A time to break down, and a time to build up. A time to weep, and a time to laugh. A time to mourn, and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. What profit hath he that worketh in that wherein he laboreth? I have seen the travail which God hath given to the sons of men to be exercised in it. And then verse 11, this precious verse, says, He hath made everything beautiful in his time. Also he has set the world in their heart. So that no man can find out the work. That God maketh from the beginning. To the end. Let's pause even now. And let's pray that the Lord will speak to our hearts. Through the word of God today. Brother Drew would you ask God's blessing. For the message today. Father. Father we so thank you Lord. That your time is perfect. Yes. You've given us Lord God. Prescribe things throughout the Word of God to know, Lord God, thy will and thy way, Lord, concerning time. I pray, Lord God, you just touch our hearts today. Let us, Lord God, understand and realize, Lord God, your will. Lord, we're looking for your glory. We're asking, Lord God, that you be greatly magnified today. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you. We take from this passage of Scripture that life has seasons. Whatever season of life that you are in right now, we could go uh, down to uh, every person in here. You're in a season of life. And whatever season of life you are in, here's the thing. You've not always been in that season. 
You have had different seasons of life. You had, if you're a young child, you have that. Then there's a teenage season. There's a young adult season. There's the middle age season. There's the senior citizen season. And, uh, and, and uh, no children and children in the home or uh, children leaving home or grandchildren or uh, different health scenarios come into it. Life is a life of seasons, isn't yeah. it? And, and, and they do. They come and they go. And, 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 and life doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. It, it just goes from one season to the next. And uh, you're doing this. And, and now you're doing that. And you're a part of this. And then you're a part of that. And, and when something stops or uh, someone leaves or uh, scenarios change, life goes on. There's different seasons that we all go through. Now, we need to remind ourselves that God did not just make us for time, God made us for eternity. Amen? And one of the things that we need to be reminded of is, is that don't get so caught up in whatever season you're in right now. See the entirety and see that God has a purpose, a big purpose. And it's not just about the season that you're in. It's about the entirety. God is at work. And in that season, God sees more than just that. God sees the whole picture, but he's wanting to use that, whatever that is in your life. He wants to use that for, uh, but, but don't get so caught up in uh, that season. But life goes on and uh, we are made for eternity. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3, those things that we just read are contrasts, aren't they? A time to born, a time to die, a time of war, a time of peace, all right? A time of love, a time of pain. There's, there's those contrasts, and they are one extreme to the other. And, you know, there's no one emotion that can sum up all of life. Right. There really isn't. You really can't sum it up uh, in one emotion. And, uh, and the, th the thing is, the, the longer we live the more sometimes things become harder to explain. Things become, uh, they, they cannot be explained. Well, one of the things that I get asked often, you can imagine as a pastor, I get asked, and people will say, Pastor, why? And you know what? I don't know a lot of times. Amen? Truth of the matter is, that's God's department. Amen? Amen? <laughs> and we just sung about it. Farther along, we'll know all about it. Farther along, we'll understand why. Sometimes in the middle of things, we don't understand why. We don't understand all why God does what he does. Things cannot be explained, all right? By the way, if you have everything, if you have everything understood, I'd like for you to talk to you after church. I have some questions for you, man. We cannot comprehend all that comes to us. We cannot comprehend all that comes to those uh, that we love. I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand. I'm, I'm 47 years old, getting ready to be 48 years old, but I had a brother who lived nine months. Explain that. I, I, I don't know. Why did God do that? I don't know why God did that. Uh, 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 some of you had uh, stillbirths. Some of you have lost children in, in your womb. Uh, some of you have uh, uh, I've gone through, and uh, listen, in, in a crowd like this, we could go one by one of different things that you did not expect to happen in your life. Unexplained things. That there are things that we cannot call, uh, cannot comprehend. And may I remind every single one of us that when we come into the house of God, uh, that we are laboring alongside and praying alongside and serving alongside and worshiping alongside people who have difficulties and trials. Oh, man. We need to be reminded of that. We need to pray for one another. We need to lift up one another. We need to encourage one another. And, uh, and they, may not, uh, they may not even uh, be able to vocalize that in a, in, in a setting like this. But uh, listen, just know that there are people that are going through things that you go to church with. Maybe not be so quick to judge uh, why someone uh, does it when you say, well, good morning. And that person says to you, well, good morning. Well, I don't know why they don't have a smile on their face. Well, and they may be going through something. Yeah. It may be a trial. It may be a burden uh, that they're going through. And uh, listen, we all have those things. It's hard to understand sometimes the suffering that people go through. And, it's, and, and a lot of times we just don't understand all why the Lord does what he does. 
Now, the book of Ecclesiastes is an amazing book of the Bible. I hope you've read it. I hope you've yeah. taken time to study it. Because it's really, a, it's a book about life. No wonder the word time is mentioned over and over. Because we think about our lives, you know, it, it, so much of life is, is, is measured by time, isn't it? I mean, this morning there was a uh, time to get up and there was a time to get ready. And there was a choir rehearsal time and Sunday school time and, and morning service time and nursing home time and choir practice time and Sunday evening service time. And we'll go to bed at a certain time and we'll set our alarms and get up tomorrow at a certain time. And tomorrow we have this. It, it's, it's time, 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 isn't it? It really is. But here is Solomon. And I want you to think about him for a moment. He, he goes through life and, 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 and over and over again, he's trying to find satisfaction. In his heart and in his soul. And over and over again, you'll find him saying this vanity of vanities, it's all vanity. Amen. And what does that word mean, vanity? He's not talking about, ladies, the thing that's, that's in your bathroom or in your bedroom. That's not the vanity he speaks of. He's, the word vanity means empty. The, 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 you could summarize the book of Ecclesiastes, if, if you could, into one statement, you would say this life is empty without God. Life is empty without God. He tried everything to find satisfaction, and he kept coming up empty. He said, vanity of vanities, it is all vanity. But he says here in verse number one that a life, he says, is a time of seasons. He noticed that, that, that there were the different seasons of life. And, and you're going through the birth season. Sometimes you'll go through the death season. You'll go through the love season. You'll go through the hate season. You'll go through the, uh, the good times. And you'll go through the hard times. And, and all of those are seasons of life. Three simple thoughts I'm going to lay in your heart this morning. Number one, consider writing this down. Number one, I want us to consider the inability of the king. The inability of the king. Now, the king that we speak of this morning, his name is Solomon. Can I just tell you a little bit about him? First of all, I want you to notice about Solomon. If you study his life, he was a powerful king. Yeah. He had a great and mighty kingdom. It was very vast. He was an amazing king. He was very powerful. He had great, at, at his hands, we'll talk about this in a moment. Uh, he had great power and prestige and wealth. And military. He had all of those things at his hand. He was literally probably, if you could say it this way, probably the great ruler of the world at that time. Very powerful. Very powerful. He was the king. He was the king. He was not only very powerful. Consider this. He was very wealthy. They said of his wealth that his silver was as the stones and gravel in our driveways. Think of that. Can you imagine how, how many of you have gravel driveways and, and that, that big, long gravel driveway? You know what Solomon would say? Yeah, it's kind of like the silver I got. It's kind of, it's what it was. I mean, he was, he was rich. He was rich. I mean, he, he had, had amazing wealth. He had, the Bible tells us, a thousand women, 700 wives, and 300 concubines. He had a vast kingdom. He, and he lived in a time of peace. His father, David, fought many battles, but he had a, uh, had a, had a time of peace. Uh, he was a man of great wisdom. The Bible says, so you've read the story, no doubt, that he asked God for wisdom, and God gave him these other things. God gave him the power, and God gave him the prestige, and God gave him the wealth, and because he didn't ask for those things, but he asked for wisdom. He was a man of great wisdom, of great uh, knowledge and understanding. Others would come to him. Other kings would come to him and, and question him and inquire of his wisdom. And he would give wonderful answers. You remember that, that queen who came to you not? Yeah. The queen who came and, and she's thinking, she's making that long journey to him. She said, you know, I've heard about this guy. It's no way. No way he can be that great. No way he can be that wise. No way he can be that strong. No way he can be that, that wealth. There's no way. I'm going to see it for myself to hear that, uh, you know, through the rumor mill that, that this was wrong. And when she left, she said, yeah, you know what? It was wrong. But wrong the other way. But half had been told. She was so amazed. I mean, that's the man that we're talking about here. He was a builder. He was an architect. He made marvels, that were things that were the marvel of his day. 
But yet with all of that, the wealth, uh, the prestige, the power, uh, the, the, all that he had, he looks at life and he realizes with all that I have, there are some things I can't change. I can't change. I can't change the seasons. Even with my wealth, there's still seasons. Even with my wisdom, there's still seasons. And I, there are some things that I cannot change. I cannot, uh, eat, I, I cannot uh, buy myself a longer life. I cannot buy myself happiness. I cannot buy myself joy. I cannot buy myself these things. And so point number one is the inability of the king. And so he's thinking about really how little power he really actually had. He thought he had great power, but really there were a lot of things he just could not change. You don't hear anything else I say this morning, hear this. That there is a message. There is a message that comes to every single one of us in every single season of life. What is it? We need God. Amen. We need God. I don't care, listen, I don't care what season you are in, in that, whatever you, listen, whatever you're going through, can I tell you this morning, you need God. Yeah. Amen? Amen? You need God, and it doesn't matter. And by the way, uh, uh, um, we had better be careful when things are going well. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's one of the most dangerous times. Yeah. You can read over there, I'm not taking not taking there, but Deuteronomy chapter 5 and 6. God rehearsed to the children of Israel all the things that they had. And God said, listen, these are things you have because I gave them to you. Amen. There were things you had. Hey, listen, you didn't plant those things. You didn't build those things. You didn't listen, that was the good hand of God. And then here's what God, God gives them this challenge. And God gives them this warning. Beware. Beware, because when all things are going well, you're going you're gonna to think you don't need me. Right. Beware of those things. Listen this morning. There is never a time. There's never a time when you don't need the Lord. Absolutely. There's never a time when you don't say, listen, God, I need you right now in my life. Every season of life, there is a message. Hey, listen, are you listening to the message today, though? You need the Lord. You need the Lord. I don't care what it is. You need the, the Lord in uh, in birth, and you need the uh, the Lord in, in death. Uh, Sister Glenna, we're we're praying for little man there. That's a little man, right? All right. And so for, far as we know, unless we get surprised, right? Any day now. Amen. Day the tenth is a good day. But anyways, <laughs> now here's the thing. You know what? That that little one needs the Lord every single day. Uh, yeah. I, I've already. I hope you'll join me if you haven't already. Start praying for his salvation. Yeah. Amen. But here's the thing. He's, he's needed the Lord for nine months in his mama's womb. He's needed his mom every single day to grow and get stronger. And we're going to be praying that, that the Lord will bring that little one along here in a few days. And you know what? We're going to need the Lord for that. Yeah. Amen? And as he's little and as he's growing, he's going to need the Lord. Yeah. But guess what? He's going to need the Lord if the Lord tarries as, as a five-year-old. Then he's going to need the Lord as a teenager. Then he's going to need the Lord as a young man in the Lord tarries. You see, there's never a day when he's not going to need the Lord, all right? It doesn't matter what season that we are in, all right? We need the Lord. And so no matter what, you can just say this. Um, you can almost add that in in these verses. I'm not going to take time to reread them, but look at verse number two. A time to be born, I need the Lord. And a time to die, I need the Lord. A time to plant, I need the Lord. And a time to pluck up that which is planted, I need the Lord. And listen, every single one of them, you can add that phrase, because you know, we need the Lord. We need the Lord. We need the Lord. And so God is constantly, and I don't care what season you're in, God is constantly sending us that message. You need me. You need me. And by the way, if you, uh, if you were to, if you just try to struggle along in your life, you know what God may do? He may put more on your plate. Right. Until you acknowledge you need the Lord. And if I were just, let's say this is a burden. And I said, oh, I'd carry that. You know what? There's, there would come a time when I'd have to put this burden down. Does that make sense? I'm not going to go to bed sometime. Right? I, got, I mean, but I mean, here's the thing. And I, I'll not take time to do it. But you know what we could do? 
I can have each one of you grab your hymn book and pile it on top of us. Because that's the way the Lord works. He said, oh, I can handle that. It's only one hymn book. And then we have two. Well, it's a little heavier, but I can still handle it. Then we have three. Well, I can handle that. Then we have four. Well, I can handle that. Then we have five. And next thing you know is I got hymn books up to here. And I'm going, this gets harder. Help! You know what we should have done? Casting all your cares upon him. Yeah. I shouldn't have started with hymn book number 20. I should have started with hymn book number one. Right. Casting all of our care upon him, for he careth for us. And here's the thing. <laughs> if you get the attitude and the idea, oh, I can handle this. You know what God made it? Oh, yeah? Let me give you some more. Yeah. Oh, you can handle that? Really? How about a little bit more? He said, God's so mean to me. No, he's not. He's trying to get your attention where you say, Lord, help me. I need you. That's what he's trying to do. And here's Solomon. He, he thinks about all, think about all that he has. He says, you know what? I need the Lord. I need the Lord. Everybody needs the Lord. The truth is difficulties tend to help us realize that we need the Lord and our ability. Hey, let me ask you a question this morning. Do you realize you need the Lord? Number two this morning, not the inability of the king, but number two this morning, notice with me the inevitableness of death. Yeah. The inevitableness of death. Hey, folks, death, death is unavoidable. It is. All right? Somebody once said there's a new statistic out on death. One out of every one people die. Many times we just look though at verse number one, if you would. Many times we determine a season. He said, well, I'm in a season of this or a season of that or whatever it is. But you know what? Sometimes we can determine the season, but sometimes it's hard for us to determine the purpose of that season. God, what are you trying to do? What are you trying to do? But here's the thing, folks. Look at verse number two. He says, there's a time to be born and there's a time to die. I want to say to you this morning, without stutter, stammer, or apology, if you're not ready to die, you're not ready to live. Amen. You're not ready to live until you're no longer afraid to die. But death is going to come. I mean, uh, that little man who uh, lives inside of uh, Miss, Miss Glenna right now, uh, you know what? If the Lord tarries 100 years, guess what? He's going to have to face death. Think about that. We're all going to have to face that, all right, uh, sooner or later, all right? And so we, we need to understand that. And without knowing Jesus Christ as Savior, we have not taken care of the inevitableness of death. Hebrews 9, don't turn there, verse 27 says that it is appointed unto men once to die. Amen. By the way, that appointment for you is already on God's calendar. That's right. God has a calendar, and I want you to be thinking right now of your birth date. And there it is on God's calendar. Think of the year you were born. There it is on God's calendar. There it is. There's your name. There's your, there, there's your, uh, there's the day you were born. But guess what? God also has the other number on God's calendar. That's right. I don't know if that's today. I don't know if that's tomorrow. I'll post that next week, next month, next year, five years, ten years, twenty years. I don't know. But if the Lord doesn't come back in a rapture, we're going to face that. It is an appointment. Consider with me Genesis chapter number one. If you want to turn there quickly, we can. You see, God made us immortal beings. When God, and we read here Genesis chapter number one. And by the way, oh, there's an attack on the book of Genesis that I don't have time to preach on today. But Genesis chapter one, verse 26, the Bible says, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over uh, the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over the, all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he him. By the way, let us remind ourselves, there's two genders. Yeah. And whatever you were born with, you will live with the rest of your life. Yeah. Say amen. amen. But listen, God made us. God breathed into us the breath of life. You know what that tells me? then I can no more cease to exist than God can cease to exist. We are eternal. We're going to live for eternity, either in heaven or in hell. But we are immortal beings. We will live as long as God lives. 
But listen, because of sin, we are under the sentence of death. Why is there death? Well, the Bible tells us. In Romans chapter 5, verse number 12, the Bible says, Wherefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world, and death by sin. Anytime you hear of someone uh, passing away, that's a reminder of sin. It's a reminder of sin. Death by sin. Death by sin. Death by sin. The sentence of death. It is foolish to talk and live like we're going to be here forever. You know why? Because death is inevitable. It is inevitable. All right? And, and here's the thing. We remind ourselves this morning. We aren't going to take a blessed thing with us. Right. And one of these days we're going to stand before God with nothing but our naked souls. This morning. At about 7.30 this morning, I took a pen out of my office. And on that wall right there, I put a mark. You'd be hard-pressed to find it. I'll be able to find it. He said, preach, you ought not mark up the walls of the church. Well, again, you can't find it. But you know what that mark represents? Life. You know what the wall represents? Although it's a poor representation because it's not big enough. Eternity. We get so focused on the dot that we lose sight of the wall. Yeah. Listen, there's an eternity. There is an eternity that we will exist in for all of eternity. And, and here's the thing. Uh, Solomon in all his greatness. Solomon in all his wisdom. Solomon in all his wealth. Solomon in everything. Listen, he realized, you know what? I'm just like everybody else. I'm just like everybody else. I'm going to go through seasons. And you know what? My wealth, my everything, you know what? Cannot stop the seasons of life. Cannot stop the seasons of life. He came in like everybody else comes in. And he was going out like everybody else was going out. Friend, we are going to die if Jesus doesn't come. We're going to go through that gate of death. And on the other side of that gate will either be heaven or hell. Right. right. It's all determined what you do with Jesus Christ. If you know Jesus Christ as your Savior, to die is the gain. Lord. If you don't know Jesus Christ, you're going to the horrors of hell. The worm dies not and the fire is not quenched. We need to think about that today. But how many people are so caught up in that little dot over there? And we think nothing in the wall of eternity. Living for the dot. And it's all that we live for. Do you know where you're going this morning? Where will you spend eternity? I'll remind you this morning the only way to heaven is through Jesus Christ. Yeah. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, these precious verses say, by, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and have not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Folks, it is our job to tell everybody about Christ. In New Hampshire this past week, I was at a drive through establishment after church, Wendy's. We were hungry, it hadn't ate since lunch, and handed the cashier a check and a drive through The guy, one of the guys I seen with was in the car behind me. I handed her a gospel track as we pulled out. The guy behind me told me later, he said, he said, I watched her, watched her read that, make a smart remark, and throw the gospel track in the trash. She needs to be saved, doesn't she? Yeah. You know what? If she does die and go to hell, she won't be able to say that no one told her. Nobody cared for her soul. Fred, I'm not going to heaven because I'm a pastor. I'm not going to heaven because I'm trying to serve the Lord. I'm going to heaven because I'm saved. Amen. Amen. I'm saved. As a six-year-old little boy, I asked Jesus Christ to be my Savior, repented of my sin, and trusted what he did on Calvary's cross. The full payment of my sin. The inevitableness of death. Thirdly, quickly, and finally this morning, the inquiry into eternity. The inquiry into eternity. Again, I want you to go back in Ecclesiastes 3, chapter 3, because sandwiched in these 14 contrasts are two great truths, and I want you to see them and we'll be done. The first truth I want you to see is in verse number 1. He says, to everything, 
there is a season. Yep. There's a season for everything. He said, Pastor, why am I going through this? I don't know, but it's a season. You're going through a season. It's a, you're not going to be there forever. You've not always been there, but you are going through a season. But look at verse number one and notice this. And a time yeah. to every purpose under the heaven. I'm going to say, number one, that there is a season for everything. I'm going to say, number two, God has a purpose yeah. for every season. That's right. Every season. Every season. God has a purpose in your happiness. God has a purpose in your sorrow. God has a purpose in your life. God has a purpose in your death. God has a purpose in the time of war. God has a purpose in the time of peace. It does not matter what it is. God has a purpose. So what do we need to do? We need to trust him. God, you have a purpose in this. I'm going through a season in my life. And you have a purpose for me. It is beyond me. It is beyond you. It is beyond all of us to comprehend all of life. We have to come to a place where we say, God, I don't understand all that I'm going through. I don't understand all the, why you're taking me through it. But God, you have a purpose. And by God's grace and with God's help, I want to trust you. I want to trust you. You have a purpose. And look at verse number one. I love, I love the thought here. In verse number one, he says, to, and a time to every purpose under the heaven. And then he says in verse 11, he hath made everything beautiful. A little in his time. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes at the time, it doesn't seem beautiful, though, does it? You ever walk into the kitchen when your wife follows, your wife's cooking? Maybe you're the cook. I know some of you guys are pretty good cooks, but I'm not a good cook. Sometimes I walk in that kitchen, Brother Drew, and I mean, there's butter sitting there and, and shortening and flour. And, you know, I'm looking at that, I'm like, that don't look good. But you know what? Just give it a little bit of time. Yeah. Let me start. Mmm, that's starting to smell good. And it gets to the table. Man, that is good. It's beautiful in its time. My wife, over the years, she hadn't been in a while, praise the Lord, because it Kills her about every time she does. She's made she's made wedding dresses, bridesmaid dresses. It's hard to find modest ones sometimes, and so my wife's made them over the years. And I've seen her make those dresses, and uh, man, you know, got a scrap of cloth there. And you, how, how many ladies sew? Any ladies sew? All right, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, there's that there's that that cutout, right? And there's that. And there's the pins. You know, scrap here, and scrap there, and scrap here, and scrap there. You look at that, you're like, man, that's that's not very nice at all. Somebody's gonna wear that. Now you can put it all together, amen. Well, that's a pretty dress when it's all put together. Listen, friend, God makes everything beautiful in His time. We remind ourselves this morning, our time is not always God's time. But when God finishes the work, listen to me, church, this morning, it will be beautiful in His time. We may not understand the pieces, but we need to trust him. The whole is going to be beautiful. And if you think God is late, it's because you are early. God makes everything beautiful in his time. And he works for his glory yep. and for our good. That's right. He says here in verse 11, he also he has set the world in their heart so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. God has put an inquiry into eternity, into our hearts, and into our lives. We remind ourselves this morning that God did not just make us for time, but for eternity. God has a bigger picture. You say, well, I don't understand that. We don't understand. You need to understand that there's that from God's perspective, not just Amen. that. Amen. There's seasons. I ask you five simple questions and I'm done this morning. Number one, question number one. What is God doing in your life to show you that you need him? What is God doing in your life to show you that you need him? Question number two. Are you ready to die? Are you saved? Question number three. God knows the purpose of the season. Trust him. Trust him. Question number four. God will allow you to go through things in your life.
life so you could help others. Mm -hmm. uh, who are you helping in similar seasons? Right. Because you went through that season. I've seen my wife put arms around ladies who could never get pregnant. And my wife looked at them and said, God, help me through that season. God will help you. See, the Bible says we're to comfort others with the comfort that God has given to us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What a ministry that is. Number five, have you got so caught up in time? Have you got so caught up in time and the season you're in that you've lost sight of eternity? Time is at hand. The Lord could come back today. It's time to seek the Lord. It's time to surrender to the Lord and say, God, I trust you. And if the Lord came back tomorrow, I would sure want to use whatever I'm going through in my life today to make me what he wants me to be. Amen? Does that make sense? Yep. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Heads bowed this morning, your eyes are closed. I want you to consider the message today. Has God spoken to your heart today?